Back on one normal Sunday, I had this sudden urge to create pasta from scratch. When I say scratch, I mean eggs and flour and kneading, rolling, slicing and whatnot. When I sat down to reap the rewards of the countless hours that I had spent into creating this one simple meal, suddenly the thought hit me. What if I created a game that teaches people how to make different pasta shapes? First things first, I need to make a plan. And for that, I'm going to head to Notion, who are also the sponsor of this video. I've been using Notion for the past five or six years now. Ever since I saw Ali Abdal's first video about Notion, I use Notion for both my personal and professional lives. I probably have a Notion page for everything from packing lists to goal trackers to travel planning, content calendar, and everything in between. In fact, the script for this video also lives somewhere in my Notion. So I'm going to brainstorm storm this game inside of Notion with the help of the Notion AI. So these are a few game features that I can add. Interactive 3D Pasta Maker. I want to start with building 2D games first and then jump to building 3D games. So step-by-step -step tutorials, guided lessons for creating various pasta shapes from simple to complex. So the user is going to start from a simple level and move on to a more advanced level. Gameplay mechanics, mouse slash touch controls, use gestures to knead, roll, cut and shape the virtual dough. Tool selection, choose from various pasta making tools like rolling pins, pasta machines and cutters. Maybe I can also add this feature where as the user progresses through different levels, they unlock different tools and a scoring system. So we can also add a scoring system where the user can earn points based on accuracy, speed and creativity. And educational elements, pasta encyclopedia and in-game resource with detailed information about pasta types, short clips demonstrating real world pasta making techniques. This would be fun to have. Maybe I can attach a few YouTube tutorials. For the visual design, I have something very specific in mind, so I'm going to talk about it a little bit later on. So these look like really fun ideas that I can implement in my game. As I'm going through the process of building this game, I'm going to add more notes and more of my ideas and thoughts inside of this document. Now I know what game I'm going to build, but I still don't know how to build it. Earlier this year, I did try the CS50 for game development course, but I am embarrassed to say that I didn't really complete it. The course is actually in the Lua programming language, but I'm planning to build my game using JavaScript, so I still need to figure out how to do game development in JavaScript. Again, I'm going to head to Notion to create a roadmap for myself. So here, as you can see, I have all of these different study plans that I've created in the past, and I'm going to add a new one here for game development in JavaScript. Since I am a complete beginner, I am going to make use of Notion AI to draft a study plan for myself. So here's my prompt. I want to learn game development in JavaScript. I know programming with JavaScript, but I'm completely new to game development. Give me a structured list of all the topics that I need to learn. So this looks like a great starting point. I'm going to add more topics or remove the topics that I don't feel is necessary, at least for this project. But first, let's see if Notion AI is able to suggest me some resources that I can use to get started with these topics. I'm going to do the same for the rest of the sections. Now that I've added the resources, I'm going to go over this roadmap once again with the help of Notion AI and see if I can customize it further according to my goals, which is to create a 2D based web game. I spent some more time working on this roadmap to basically structure things around and overall make it look a bit better. I also added a few links to the videos that I'd been watching just for reference purposes. In case you're also interested in learning game development with JavaScript, then I'll provide a link to this roadmap in the description box below. You can also find the links to all of the different study plans that I had shown previously down there. If you're completely new to Notion, then you can also find a link to a tutorial that I created back then that walks you through the process of duplicating a Notion template and adding it to your own Notion so that you're able to edit and customize them. 
Now I'm going to get started with learning the fundamentals of game development and for that I'm going to make use of the CS50 for game development course that I had mentioned earlier. Even though the lectures make use of the Lua programming language, I still believe that these are going to be quite beneficial for me to learn the basics of game development that remain more or less the same across different programming languages. Even though I did not finish this course previously, it does not mean that I did not like it. In fact, I loved the way the lectures are structured. Each each lecture teaches you different concepts by dissecting existing popular games like Flappy Bird, Pong, Breakout, Mario and more. Next I'm going to pick up this book called Nature of Code that teaches you game physics with the help of the p5.js library. Fun fact, I had actually contributed to p5.js on GitHub as a student developer under the Google Summer of Code program so I believe that this is going to be the perfect resource for me. Now that I feel comfortable with the basics of game dev, I'm going to start building the project. The MVP is going to have just one level where I try to get the game mechanics right. Here are the different scenes that my game is going to have. The first one is the main menu. The main menu will list down all of the different levels. Each level will correspond to a different pasta shape, but for the MVP, I'm only going to start with the spaghetti pasta. The other levels are going to be locked for now because I am not going to start implementing them just yet. Once you click on a level, you will be taken to the main game area where you will be actually playing the game. On the left hand side, I am going to place all of the different ingredients that are going to be needed. On the right hand side, I'm going to place the different tools and at the bottom is where I'm going to place the instructions. If the instructions call for flour, you will have to select the flour. If it says that now you need to crack the eggs, then you will need to crack the eggs and then pour them inside of the dough. This is going to be the most complex part of the game where I'll need to implement gestures for kneading the dough, rolling the dough, shaping the dough and more. Once the level finishes, you will be taken to another scene where you will have the option to download the recipe with the instructions as well as images that correspond to those instructions. There is also going to be a button that takes you back to the main menu from where you can pick the next level. For building this MVP, I need three things right. The code, game assets and the recipes. Let's start with the recipes first. As you can probably tell, I am not Italian. In fact, I've never even been to Italy. To be honest, I am really not the right person to be building this game, but I'm still going to try. I came to this bookstore near my house in search for a book that teaches you how to make homemade pasta from scratch. This bookstore has lots of used, old or just discarded books that you can buy for cheaper prices. After going through stacks of these books, I found something that I thought would be a good match but this one was focused specifically on just hand shaped pasta whereas I was looking for something that covered everything so I came back home disappointed but I do not want to give up yet the other obvious option is watching YouTube tutorials luckily I was able to find this gem of a video that covers 29 pasta shapes however I still need a book because books are more comprehensive they have these extra pieces of information like tips tricks and historical facts which I need for the pasta encyclopedia feature of my game. For the game assets, I was thinking about using the design aesthetic in this game called Cats and Soup. But the problem is, if I sat down to draw everything by hand, by myself, it would probably take me weeks or even months to just finish drawing these assets. So I was wondering, can I use Mid Journey to speed up this design process? Thank you. 
I did pay for the pro subscription and I would say it was worth it. However, I found it a bit difficult to describe accurately the aesthetics of the cat and soup game. So instead, I just decided to go with the classic pixel art style for now. The very first thing that I tried to generate was an intro art picture, so the background for the main menu. These are a few of the results that I got and they are absolutely stunning. After that, I spent a lot of hours trying to generate each and every asset of the game. For example, all of these different pasta shapes and all of the other images of kitchen items and ingredients that I'll be needing. It is still a time consuming process because it might take you a few iterations to get the exact image that you have in your head. However, it's a lot faster than trying to create it by yourself. Once I was happy with the assets, I uploaded them to Canva to remove their background or do any final tweaks before I add them to the game. I used the variation feature in Midjourney to create different variations of the same image in order to create animation sprites. Now that I have the recipes and the game assets, I can start coding the game. The framework that I'm going to be using is phaser.js. Phaser is a JavaScript game framework. The documentation looks good enough, so let's give it a try. Let me show you what I have built so far. The music and the sound effects in this game are downloaded from Epidemic Sounds and this website called mixit.co. The game right now is pretty static and boring, that's because I have not implemented a lot of the mechanics and the animations. Right now everything is working on the mouse click event. I have to implement the drag and drop events next along with the animations. So I'm in a new city today. I am here to attend a friend's wedding and this week is going to be super busy. And I don't think I will be able to spend more time working on this game. Working on this project has made me realize that building games take a lot of time as compared to building normal front-end interfaces. I spent some more time working on this game in the last couple of days, so I've made it a bit more interactive. Let me show you what the status of the game is right now. The first thing that you see in the game is the main menu where all of the levels are listed. Except the first level, the rest of the levels are logged, so you can only click on the first level as of now. Clicking on the first level takes you to the main game area, and here you are able to see the different ingredients required to make the pasta. At the bottom of the screen, I've placed the instructions that tells the user what to do. The first step is to place the flour onto the working area or the wooden board here. I tried to create different versions of this jar turning around which replicated how you would pour something from a jar but I actually failed to do that with mid journey. I'll have to draw these assets myself by hand and just doing that is going to take so much time. I tried to do a hacky version of it so I created a rough version of how my jar animation is going to look like and I fed it to mid journey so that it could give me an improved version but again I failed to get the desired results so I've left the this animation for now. The next step is to place the eggs. For the eggs, you have to drag the egg from the carton onto the area where the egg is marked. Here again, in order to create the cracking of the egg and dropping of the egg yolk and the egg bites from the egg is another animation that I can add, but I've left that for now again. The next step is to whisk the eggs and for that I have used the drag feature on this whisk game object. After that, for kneading, again I was not sure what type of gesture to put here. So for now, I've just left it simple. When the user clicks on the door, it it gets needed. After that, you have to rest the dough for some time. I've not implemented this step right now. The next step is to slice this dough into different pieces. And for that, the user has to create these lines across the dough in order to cut it. This step was the last feature that I was able to implement. The next steps are to roll the dough and to slice the noodle shapes. For a first project, I'm actually quite happy with the results. I can definitely spend more time and hours into fine tuning each and every aspect of this game. If you're interested in checking out the code, you can find the link to this in the description box below. Let me know if you would like to watch a part two of this game where I implement the different animations and other features like accuracy detection. 
that's all for this video i'll see you guys in the next one